good morning good afternoon good evening everyone and uh, welcome to this part 2 of uh, uh, this webinar series which is build your career in the salesforce ecosystem today we are actually going to talk about how do you build your resume and it might sound very simple it might sound something which is not very important but trust me like uh, i've been in this uh, ecosystem since the last 15 years and in the industry for the last uh, 23 years and although it sounds very rudimentary this is where a lot of people kind of mess things up in fact uh, getting a good resume effective strong resume is is kind of half the battle one like it gets you shortlisted for an for a job interview and that is where that is where uh, um, uh, most people actually fail so uh in line with the the format that we followed last week we'll we'll kind of do some slides i'll talk about some some experiences i have uh, in terms of looking at resumes and some tips uh, some do's and don'ts that <clears throat> you should follow and then we'll spend a good amount of time about 20 25 minutes for any q any q and a and i realized like not all the questions will be based on resumes and that's completely fine because last time as well we had a lot of questions and we were not able to take all of them so uh, uh, we will we will spend enough time on on q and a and then uh, for the next week we will actually talk about so this week is resume is last week was an introduction and next week we'll actually talk about interview process mock interviews so the idea is that over a over a period of four weeks we we get you exposure to all the uh, aspects of uh, entering the trailblaze entering the salesforce ecosystem and Uh, hopefully landing an opportunity as well okay a little bit about sas guru before we get started in case you are new so sas guru is a certification prep platform i want to reiterate it is not uh, it is not a dumps platform it is not a site where you can expect exam questions uh, it is conceptual learning it is something which emphasizes on learning the concepts and then practicing those concepts using practice tests none of the exam questions are questions none of the questions in in sas guru are questions which you will actually get in the exam so and then there is there is uh, uh, there is obviously the usp which is it is tailored so as you progress for example you give a test it identifies your weakness and then you can work on those weaknesses as well so it gives you a analysis of what your strengths are what your weaknesses are and how you should go about it in terms of attempting the exam uh, it is also organized well so there is no clutter there are short videos there are micro modules and then it's uh, gamified similar to trailhead with study groups uh, challenges and and leaderboards as well and the best part is that it is actually powered by community so i am a part of uh, sas guru's uh, 100 cross 100 mission which is basically 100 mentors uh, devoting 100 hours of their time to kind of help people in in the salesforce ecosystem either enter the ecosystem or prepare for a certification that they always wanted to do or help them just uh, with mentoring in terms of achieving their career goals uh, whatever they have so uh, the idea is that it complements trailhead and it, it is uh, as i said a cert prep platform so it, it charges your certification prep um, it helps you benchmark your performance it is personalized you can use it to revise the key concepts and you're able to do practice tests and then you also get one to one mentoring which is something which uh, obviously trailhead cannot provide because of the scale of the ecosystem but again the idea is here is very very clear it is something that uh, complements trailhead it is not a competitor or a replacement to trailhead by any chance okay so what do you get in terms of joining the sas guru community there are certification vouchers that are given out uh, there are tips and updates which happen on a regular basis live classes and webinars uh, again this is one of the example webinars and then uh, the best part is the there is a slack community which is active and the gurus are pretty much from all parts of the world so i'm based in india i know there are people in australia in us uh, in the middle east as well. so there is good coverage across different time zones and i see it's it's active and buzzing with action pretty much uh, 24 cross 7 so that is the advantage uh, <clears throat> Akshay will post a link to the Slack community in terms of how you can join. So please do join the Slack community, and that will be uh, a good benefit for you. And then you should also follow Sas Guru on LinkedIn for some of the content that they share, and also some of the campaigns that they launch from time to time. All right, so let's get started. As I said, like uh, building a resume probably sounds simple, and then. uh i receive a lot of resumes like i interview a lot of candidates but i also spend a lot of time filtering out resumes so 
based on my experience like these are some tips uh, which actually work well and these are some things that you should do especially if you are a new entrant in the ecosystem uh, it's a common misconception that the more detailed your resume is the better your chances are of being shortlisted that is not at all true nobody likes to read resumes which are five pages 10 pages long if i get a resume which is more than three pages um i probably will not look at it or i'll still still spend the same amount of time i would have planned if it was one page so probably the the attention span would then be split into multiple pages um the idea is you keep it short you keep it crisp but at the same time you highlight your strengths so if you have done any credentials that is certifications that is super badges absolutely you should ident- you should highlight those and then a good way of doing that is putting the icons there rather than using long names like uh, uh, identity and uh, sharing and visibility designer like if you just put the icon i think that a picture is worth a thousand words and uh, and the certification logo signifies uh, that as well so that's that's one tip which i would want to give if you have any practical experience or any internships that you have done obviously list list, uh, list it out as well that is that is obviously going to be key uh, provide a link to your trailblazer id so tbid as we call it is it is kind of the single source of truth in terms of all your credentials so all your trailblazer badges all your answers that you have given to um, on the trailblazer community all your certifications that all shows up on your trailblazer id page and i'll actually show you what what it looks like so definitely link it out uh, it is something that that actually showcases your strength and obviously link it link to your linkedin profile as well i see a lot of people either they don't link it to link they do not provide a link to linkedin or they are not on linkedin at all so that kind of raises some eyebrows in terms of uh, uh credibility and how uh, how the person operates and again a tip on linkedin do not mention like a confidential position like do not mention that you are working in a company and you call it confidential that that is a that is a big red flag for uh, recruiters as well as for uh, senior people if they if they look at your profile so it it kind of breaks the trust early on which is not something that you want so again get recommendations on linkedin i have actually seen some people who actually link to their recommendations linkedin recommendations in their resume which is fantastic uh, you can you can do that as well showcase your trailblazer rank obviously there are multiple ranks now and there are you can be a one star ranger you can be an all star ranger so the more the merrier the more you highlight i think the the better it speaks about your credentials and then also talk about your achievements your awards and specifically around the community contribution so um, salesforce has uh, a concept of pledge 1% and giving back to the community and again i've been in different ecosystems but i've never seen any other ecosystem which is as strong when it comes to giving back so and a lot of it is actually transferred to the partner ecosystem like i work for a salesforce partner and uh, as part of our partner trailblazer school there is, there is a lead pillar which is basically how do we we give back to the community so i think it is encouraged and it is kind of following the the overall value chain in salesforce so if you do anything like that that is great you should definitely point it out uh a good resume structure so i'll actually show you i i took this from uh, salesforce ben which is where i also write some some blog posts as well uh, a good resume structure is simple but it is actually complete as well so you typically have a header you have a title you have your contact details again phone email location social could be linkedin twitter um, that is enough uh, you don't need to put your instagram or tinder ids there i've actually seen people put out instagram and and facebook that is not needed on a resume uh, skills again it depends if you are interviewing for a developer role uh, whatever programming languages you have learned obviously um, if you are uh, interviewing for a salesforce developer position then apex absolutely yes if you have worked on visual force lwc those frameworks and any other framework that you have worked on you should list them along with your proficiency level so it is basically a self assessment that you say that i am basically a 7 on 10 on on apex so the interviewer kind of sets his expectations his or her expectations accordingly that maybe this person knows enough but they do not know the advanced concepts if you are an expert on lwc then why not like just rate yourself 9 or a 10 and then the questions will also be uh, may also be uh, asked accordingly and then similarly if you are a ba then what kind of uh, skills you have as a business analyst like uh ux skills uh storyboarding skills um qa skills automation if you know automation 
if you have functional qa skills uh, in terms of project management again you could you could elaborate you could also list down your credentials if you have and then obviously like uh, uh, it's not just about technical skills uh, the resume should also reflect on your overall personality as well so what is it that you want to do uh, what is it that you like to do and person like when i start off an interview or when i read a resume i typically to make the candidate feel at home i typically ask them like what is it that they what is it that uh, interests them and uh, again i think uh, putting something like i like watching ott or netflix that is not the best uh, impression that you are setting on on a on an interview so yeah whatever you pick like just be mindful that it kind of sets the impression on the interviewer and again you could be reading a lot you could be watching youtube um, tutorials or whatever interest you you could be learning guitar <clears throat> just mention that it should be a little bit more creative than just watching netflix uh, if you have any mentoring experience doesn't really matter if it was in school uh, whatever you did but it is actually helpful and it kind of helps an interviewer assess or a or a recruiter who's screening your resume uh, uh, assess your resume as well uh, event speaker again if you have done some public speaking that is a big plus it kind of adds up uh, the brownie points for you uh if you have been active in the community then you should definitely list that as well getting a little bit of an echo from somebody i'll just mute that person okay so moving on uh professional summary personal statement again this is very important like it's a snapshot of what you have done till now and also uh, kind of an indication of where you want your career to move uh in the years to come so how many years of experience you have obviously this doesn't really apply if you're a fresher if you have worked in specific domains or industries what certifications you have if you have multilingual skills uh, hard skills soft skills again these are technical skills and and uh, communication skills as well and then obviously key accomplishments and numbers so i emphasize a lot on numbers and visuals because again like anyone who's who's into recruitment will get a lot of resumes to look at and the the secret to to stand out among the crowd is uh, add a lot of visuals logos and also add a lot of numbers and just make sure that you don't don't fake those numbers or logos you need to back it up and uh, you will certainly be asked some questions on that it's also a way to kind of influence your interviewer in the direction which you want so for example if somebody is really good with the, for example let's say heroku so i would actually highlight using like i am a certified heroku developer or certified heroku architect and i would kind of emphasize that two or three times in my resume and then there is a good chance that an interviewer will definitely ask some questions on heroku and then work experience if you are a lateral candidate what kind of work experience you have what 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 companies did you work for what was the duration for that and just highlighting like what what were the key uh, uh, key accomplishments or what were some of the key projects that you did obviously your education is important a lot of companies do not uh do not ask for this or just simply ignore this but it's still it's still good to add it just in case it matters and uh just to avoid the back and forth if they come back with with any questions uh so david lu who is a fellow salesforce mvp um he, he and i were presenting at a conference and uh, i really liked the way he actually described and this was his tip for getting uh, getting interviews or getting preparing a resume for applying for google so david lu works at google uh he's a plural site author uh, like me and he's a, also a salesforce mvp like me and we've interacted a lot and um, like i really liked how he kept, keeps it really simple so you look at his, his resume on the right hand side he highlights all the achievements that he has he highlights the certifications then he comes down to the experience he talks about his skills and that's it it gives me he talks about his education and his skills it gives me a really good idea of what he's been doing over the years how he started off like what are some of his accomplishments and then if if an, as an interviewer i want to dig deeper i can do that and uh, some of the other tips which he which he has like create a resume specifically for the company so this is very important so in salesforce ecosystem as well you could actually end up on a working for a salesforce partner you could end up working for a salesforce customer even within salesforce partner you might be working for a salesforce consulting partner you might actually work for an app exchange partner so roles are somewhat similar and they are also different in many ways as well so if you are applying for a product company then you need to highlight some specific skills if you are uh, applying for a services company then you probably need to uh, highlight like uh, client facing skills customer interaction skills 
have a cover letter again this is very very important like i get impressed any time i get a cover letter from a candidate which is personalized so i know that they have spent some time in preparing for the interview and they really want this job and again as david pointed out like less than 20% of the people do it and if you are somebody who's who's been looking for an opportunity and if you have not been writing cover letters do that the only intent of cover letter is to kind of justify uh why you are a good candidate why you are a good fit for that specific role and why you really want to do this i think that is where that is your opportunity to kind of get your message across because your resume or your cv is still very very formal uh the cover letter is basically where you can ac- actually express yourself and that is that is a great way of doing it so again the emphasis on numbers and and logos so as you can see from 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 the resume on the right like uh the more numbers that uh, that you and again numbers are easier to crunch than than text so i think that is the overall idea as well and make your best attributes easy to read as i said like if i want to uh if i want to emphasize to the interviewer that i'm good at something i will make sure that it is repeated across my resume in a very subtle manner so he he or she gets the hint and david actually believes on resume should only be one page long I personally am okay with two pager resumes but any more than that then obviously it's it's you're dragging it a little bit so uh, that is the overall idea keep it keep it crisp keep it sharp and at the same time make sure that you're highlighting uh, whatever you you want to and then a fantastic way is like these are very very new like salesforce launched these uh, badges at the end of august um and then you can actually put them on on your resume and link it to your uh, trailhead profile as well uh obviously your resume has to be tailored uh, according to the role that uh, you are uh, you are planning for so if you are aspiring for a developer role then you need to highlight your development skills if you are applying for a architect role or any other role then obviously you need to uh, highlight those skills as well so that is very very important you cannot actually build a generic resume and then apply for a developer role and architect role so the worst thing that you can do is uh, you can send it out to 10 different companies and uh for different positions so that is something which will which will definitely not work okay. still getting an echo so okay all right so uh this is uh, again something which uh, has been fairly recent in fact it was launched by salesforce ben this week and uh, something which i've actually not seen earlier and that is why i actually wanted to 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 share this as well that your interviews will actually depend on the kind of role and the kind of um, experience that you have so this is a great snapshot i will also share this link in the chat and your interview will also the interview question will also depend on the kind of inter- kind of role that you are that you are giving so if you are an end user for example if you are into uh, admin if you are a developer your your interview questions will likely be different from if you are a consultant or if you are a sales or an app exchange uh, partner so uh, it really depends on on those i will actually share this link as i said do take some time to actually go through it this is this is uh, i call this a gold mine of information in terms of the various roles uh, so do spend some time on it uh, a lot of times i come up uh, with with questions like i really want to do an internship because i don't have experience especially for the folks in india now there is uh, salesforce has launched this virtual internship program with a company called smart interns again i will sh- drop that link shortly in the chat and uh, if you are in college or if you are about to graduate then i definitely recommend getting into this program because it will actually give you a certificate as well and then they also have two parts i don't think it would be visible because the, the size is a little bit uh, small but i will actually open this link and i'll actually show it to you so this is a great program uh, to get an internship as well uh, another message i want to reiterate if you want to get a certification voucher again uh, there is a camp contest which i am running in um, a collaboration with salesforce so gilda hillary she works for salesforce and if you have seen her on linkedin or twitter she's always helping people in some ways or the other she's responsible for all the all the marketing cloud groups uh, across the globe but even other than that like she's she's always trying to help people and uh, she actually reached out to me a few weeks back and she said i want to help a few people with uh, with their learning goals and then we came up with this contest where if you want a certification voucher uh, we have reserved 10 vouchers 
Uh, all you need to do is post on LinkedIn or Twitter with this hashtag, my goals for DF22, and just tag me and uh, Gilda on it. And then we'll pick 10 of the most creative entries. Mind you, we have already received about 20, 25 entries on this. But absolutely, if you have a compelling uh, compelling story in terms of uh, how you have been learning or what is what is your next goal and why you really want to do it, then then please do participate. And if you get if you get in the top 10, then we'll, we'll, we'll send a voucher and some sales for swag your way. There is also a module on Trailhead, which is basically how you actually create your resume. Again, uh, it should not take you too long. Again, the idea is uh, basically you should do it. Like you, there is there is a lot of resume samples available as well. And then uh, it gives you tips in terms of what you should do, what you should not do. And then there are some really good links. So that is one piece. Uh, then the other one, which I mentioned from Salesforce Ben, which I think is really good and actually offers templates as well, is uh, please do see this video. Uh, it's it's really good and this is something which I've already covered. But again, the templates are also something which is uh, which is very very important. So you you can actually use this. So you are not starting from scratch. Uh, if you have like no certification logos, you can do it with certification logos. And then uh, I personally like this one, like it is, it is good, but it's entirely up to you. But this is, this is like something which is, which is, you can easily use. And then let me open this one so I can show it to you. So all you need to do is enter your information and thus this creates your uh, resume. So it's, it's really good. And I would actually recommend that you, you do this. Okay. And then the last one is like the internship, which I mentioned. Uh, so this is the program. This is specifically for India. Uh, I see a question about that in the chat. So yeah, unfortunately, this is not in the US. This is only in India. Uh, if you are a college fresher, or I think it is also open to others. You can you can apply. And then this is actually endorsed by Salesforce. So this person, Arundhati, she is the Salesforce uh, India CEO. And uh, yeah, good program. So they actually have to... Uh, internships that they offer and it's also virtual so uh, first cohort was completed second is in progress and then they have two more planned uh, the developer journey kind of talks you through some of the developer skills and then you are also required to complete some super badges and then you get uh, verified and you actually receive a completion certificate as well similarly the admin uh, journey uh, you you go through certain steps and then you complete uh, those relevant modules and then you also get a completion certificate uh, again the idea of that is that it is um, you actually get a certificate so you have an internship there is there is a hands-on component to it as well and they have some some good instructors uh, who are behind this program uh, yeah unfortunately there's this program as i mentioned it's only limited to uh, india only all right so in terms of content that is pretty much it uh, 